Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got the next literary analysis video for Vigor's cassette tape number 5. So, it's been a while since I've done one of these, and I should specify a few things. First off, apologies if my audio isn't as clean as usual. I'm currently quarantined in my home with COVID, so that sucks, but I still feel good enough to make some videos for you guys. Otherwise, this is going to be less of a literary analysis and more of a literal analysis, because where the other ones had symbolism or metaphors that contributed to the greater meaning of the story, this one just kind of outright told us some more information about the lore of the game. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into this video. Okay, so to start we have the opening sentences which just establish our setting and immediate context for this cassette. She's in the rafters of a small shed and listening to the two people talking underneath her. So next up we learn that both of these guys are from Ark and more specifically that Ark is trying to rebuild humanity and bring back civilization. Now, we pretty much already knew this from the Adam storyline, but still, now we have another example in writing of Ark or the Airdrop Retrieval Corps' motives as an organization. In this next section, she explains that one of them is apparently a new member. On one hand, this is meaningful to this little section of story because it's the writer's way of giving us a lot of Ark's exposition with just one conversation, but it also raises the question of Ark's recruitment methods. If they're still gaining members, what's the difference between a normal outlander and an agent of Ark? What would the recruitment process look like, and is there potential in the future for us to join the faction ourselves? Unlikely, if I had to say so myself, but nothing wrong with a bit of tinfoil hat speculation for the future of Vigor. Now, here she uses the irony of their name and their intentions to highlight the hypocrisy of ARC's members and their supposed goals. Now this is the only real information we've gotten about Wrath, but I would say Freya's assumption that they aren't morally clean is a reasonable one. And even with ARC's overarching goal, pun intended, being to re-establish humanity, there's always going to be people who use brutality to gain power in any governmental system, especially in the post-apocalypse. So I'd say Freya's negative tone when they're talking about Wrath here is implying that they'll take a potentially and antagonistic role in the future. Now here, I'm not 100% sure who they're talking about, but my best guess would be Ada, which if it is her, it's very interesting to hear her described as such ferocity here. While what I said about power and brutality remains true, we haven't yet seen Ada display any seriously violent force as a faction leader other than her mild association with the elimination of Lars through Adam. Either way, with Ada being our primary bridge between lore and gameplay, I'm very eager to see more of her characterization in the future. This is then followed up by a nice little callback to the actual gameplay loop of Vigor, and then we start to hear Ark's perspective and opinions on this Viking faction, which as expected Freya idolizes because of her fixation with Norse mythology in general. In some ways, I think she's right to be critical of the reconstruction of society, but then later on I think we'll come to understand that these people are surely not the perfect faction she makes them out to be. And then finally we get the last bit of information setting the stage for the next cassette to take place at the Falcanton Church, which I'm very excited about because while there was some sustenance to this one, the next one has many more literary devices and strategies used by the author than this one. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.